we worship the Lord, may the Spirit of Christ empower us to pursue God's purpose for our lives in this world. Please join me in the call to worship. How manifold are the works of God. In wisdom, God has made them all. The earth is full of God's creatures. They look to God to feed them in due season. God will pour out the Spirit on all his daughters and sons. We shall see visions and dream dreams. Thank you. 
the kids, uh, the youth, uh, they've raised money, so they're going to pay for their tickets and uh, their hotel rooms for that money. But uh, anyone else would like to join us, the information is there. Uh, ben, uh, we haven't decided yet whether we're going to do plan A or plan B, correct? Okay, so plan A is, uh, is the plan for now. If they're sold out, then we've got plan B. We're going to make that decision by uh, June 9th. Two Sundays from now. Two Sundays from now. Yes. So, talk to Ben if you're, if you're interested. We have some other uh, announcements. I forgot to cancel our Bible study announcement. Uh, Judy and I are starting our vacation uh, this week, so the Chosen Bible Study will start up again, I, I believe, on Thursday, June 20th or something like that. Or Wednesday, Wednesday, June 20th, we'll start up again. So there's no Bible Study this week. Uh, like I said, we're going on vacation, and we'll start up in the middle of, of June, and that will be in the morning. Uh, in the following weeks, we'll put that in the room. You can see the Friendly Special Class is doing a mission project, and all the information is there on your insert. And uh, I can uh, put some Father's Day pictures into the Father's Day uh, light show this week. Again, and after this week, I'll be gone. So get those to me, either by uh, emailing them to me through a uh, picture file, or uh, give me the uh, actual copy so that I can scan. Any other announcements this morning? Anything else happening that we need to know about? Yeah? Uh, at 2 o'clock this afternoon, we're going to go to 6 for the place to our range, so we're going to 5. So at 2 o'clock this afternoon, we're going to uh, fill up and try to refresh one of our fire events up front and come back. So anybody that would like to help, we'd be much appreciated. 2, two o'clock this afternoon. Going to work on the front of the flower bed, and uh, I'll be down in the stadium. So smart. <laughs> Anybody else know that uh, they could help? We appreciate your help. Five dozen eggs in the refrigerator. Five dozen eggs in the refrigerator. The old, the old refrigerator. So if you want some homegrown eggs. On down and get them out of the refrigerator there, there, or your tape. Anything else? Joe, I want to a praise. Okay. Today's Deb's birthday. She doesn't want to acknowledge it. Today is Deb's birthday. And she's retired as of Friday. And she's a, 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 a retired teacher now. Congratulations, Deb. <laughs>
days in a way an odd thing to honor those who died in defense of our country, in defense of us, in wars far away. The imagination plays a trick. We see these soldiers in our mind as old and wise. We see them as something like the founding fathers, gray, gray hair. But most of them were boys when they died, and they gave up two lives, the one they were living and the one they would have lived. When they died, they gave up their chance to be husbands and fathers and grandfathers. They gave up their chance to be revered old men. They gave up everything for our country, for us. We owe it to them we can never repay. All we can do is remember them, what they did, and why they had to be brave for us.
God has forgiven us in Christ, let us forgive one another. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Let's take a few minutes and uh, ask the peace of Christ. Shake someone's hand. Morning, Tom. 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 Yes. Um, Ken and Judy, have you been praying for there, but 
both doing a lot better. Who's that? Ken and Judy. We Ken and Judy. Yep. Okay, good. That's good to hear. opportunity uh, on this uh, beautiful Sunday morning to seek you and uh, experience your presence. As Isaiah experienced your presence, uh, we, we know you are here among us, for where two or three are gathered in your name, you are in their midst. And you call us to, uh, to seek you, to know you, and to lift these people up in prayer, in faith, knowing that your healing hand can be upon them. We thank you for uh, those mentioned today, uh, Peggy uh, going through surgery on her back. Lord, we pray that uh, there would be no complications and that she would recover quickly. We thank you for the prayers we pray for on uh, Patty Bennett and how she's going and, and continue to uh, move in her life and direct her where you want her to go. We thank you for the prayers we pour on Ken and Judy. Continue to be with them and their health. We thank you that your healing hand is upon them. Lord, we lift up young Luca to you, and this heart problem that he's had uh, ever since he was born. We pray, Lord, that uh, whatever needs to be done, you would direct the, the doctors, the medical staff, and that all would go well. Lord, so many people are battling cancer, and we lift them up to you, and we pray that their medications and, and uh, their treatments would be effective. Nancy and Michelle, and Jim, Buddy and Sam, think of Marjorie, Dan and Kim, we lift up Adina to you and Philip. Think of Tom and Susie. Lord, if uh, they are going through radiation, if they are going through chemo, we pray that uh, that would help, that it would be effective. Be with Gail and Ron. We lift up John to you and Jack. Be with Marlene and Donna. Some are in remission, like the young Leo. We pray that you would sustain that uh, healing, that the cancer would not come back. We continue to lift up care to you also, to be with all these people. Lord, we think of uh, all those who are having other health problems and, and uh, friends and relatives. We pray for them. We think of uh, those who are bad with diabetes. Lord, watch over their lives. We pray for, for those who uh, are just bad with health problems and, and uh, are on medications. Watch over them. There are some, Lord, who are battling Parkinson's. We pray, Lord, that their meds would be effective. Continue to uh, be with those who are recovering from strokes. Lord, we pray that uh, you would help them through, through their physical therapy. Be with uh, others, young ones who have just gone through uh, surgery, and uh, others who need, need medication. Lord, continue to uh, watch over our young ones, each and every one of them. And we pray for those who are having health problems. We know so many people or have having heart problems. And uh, we ask, Lord, that uh, you would uh, watch over their lives, that uh, their meds would help them, that you would touch them and heal them. Lord, uh, be with uh, those who are battling other problems like muscular uh, dystrophy, uh, brain uh, problems, and, and uh, other uh, problems like falling. We, we know that uh, several have fallen and, and are hurt and are recovering from falls. Continue to be with them. We pray, Lord, for also, Lord, for these unspoken requests. We, we know that you know the answers. We know that you can guide and shine your light upon the past. So we pray for these families with the unspoken requests. Cheryl and Jane, Debbie, and Patrick's family, and Mitch's family, watch over each and every one of them. Lord, we 
thank you for uh, this life. It's uh, a challenging life, but you've given us this opportunity to live and to love and to care and to help. We live in a dangerous world where things go wrong, where bad things happen. There are wars. There are, there's destruction. There's violence. We pray for those who are trying to protect freedoms, trying to, to protect us uh, from the, the, the difficulties that are out there. Watch over our soldiers around the world. Bring them home safely to their uh, families when the poor duty is done. Watch over the missionaries who have gone out into the world to share the love of, of Christ with others. Speak uh, through them and shine that light of love in the lives of so many people. So Lord, we thank you for all these things. And now we pray together the prayer that the Son of God taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This time let us honor the Lord with the giving of our tithes, our gifts, and our offerings. Yeah, well, I would just like to remember the many missionary couple in Haiti.
We thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
And they were calling to one another, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is full of His glory. Now this dramatic encounter that Isaiah had with God had an impact on his life. In, in God's presence, he suddenly realized, well, I'm not worthy to be here. I'm not worthy to experience this. I, I, I'm a flesh and blood human being. I have faults. I, I, I make mistakes. I, I have sinned. I should not be in God's presence. And so he humbled him himself before God. He said this, Woe to me, I cried. I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips. And I live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Isaiah, like us, we, we live in, in a world of, of unclean lips. So we all have our faults. We all stumble and, and, and fall. But in the presence of God, humbled in his heart, he, he came before God with, with that attitude of humility, and of course, God offered him grace and, and mercy, just like God does to all of us. We, we have all uh, felt like Isaiah, and, and we have all come to that point where we, we've said, Lord, I, I don't deserve your grace, but yet you give it to me. Isaiah 6, 8. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, here I am. Send me. Once that grace of God powerfully touched Isaiah's life, he understood what a gift he had been given. He understood how merciful God is. And, and, and he was ready to hear these words from the Lord. And the Lord said, Who shall I send and who will go for us? God was calling someone to go out into the world and do the work of God's kingdom, to share God's love, God, God's work with, with the people in this world. And at that point, Isaiah's life had turned around and he realized that God was calling him. And he said, here I am, send me. I will go for you. I will do whatever you call me to do. So this dramatic encounter that Isaiah had in his life turned him completely around. And in this state of humility, he received God's grace and God's forgiveness and God's power, and he was ready to go forward into the world and make a difference for the Lord, whatever God had called him to do. And uh, throughout my life, I have encountered many people like Isaiah who, who had dramatic encounters with God and their lives were turned around 180 degrees. And, and most of these people that I know who've had these encounters, uh, their lives have drifted into the dark corners of this world. Some of them were addicted to alcohol. Others were addicted to drugs. Some of them were involved in promiscuity, uh, promiscuity and sexual immorality. They were at the bottom of the barrel. But then that they looked up, and as they looked up, God appeared to them, extended God's mercy and grace and forgiveness to them. And, and like Isaiah, they, they became new creations. Uh, their lives turned around completely. And, and from then on, they went forward serving God, making a positive difference in the world and building the kingdom of God. A recent example is a celebrity by the name of Russell Brand. He's a comedian. Have you ever heard of Russell Brand? Russell Brand was notorious. Uh, for his excesses, uh, for being involved with alcohol and drugs and, and promiscuity. But recently, he has felt drawn into this relationship with, with God. And, and I watched a, a YouTube video of him the other day, and, and uh, I wrote down the words that he said. He, he just got baptized. He just got baptized. And, and here are the words that he said. He said, I've reached the point where the figure, the personage, the presence of Christ became overwhelming, unavoidable, welcoming, necessary. 
He said, all the excesses of my life had left me empty. And uh, there was nothing that would satisfy me until I began seeking who this Jesus was and coming to the conclusion that he was the Lord of Lords. And I invited him into my life and, and I became baptized. Now, I pray for Russell Brand because it's not easy. Uh, this walk with the Lord can be very difficult at times. And most of us in this walk with God stumble and fall. We will we'll take uh, a couple steps forward, then we'll stumble and we'll fall backwards. Then we'll make a few more spiritual steps forward, and we'll make another mistake, and we'll fall, and we'll fall backwards. Now we think that this is what Russell Brand is in for, too. He's going to find it's a difficult, challenging walk with God in this world that we're living in. But I pray that, that he hangs in there. I pray that he continues to grow spiritually and, and becomes the person God wants him to be. You know, God even uses those times of stumbling. When we make mistakes, when we fall, when we go down the wrong path and, and we fall on our face, if, if we look back, God, God always picks us back up. God always offers forgiveness to us again, puts us on our feet, and gets us started again. And usually, those times when we stumble, when we fall, are learning times. They are times when God helps us to see from a new perspective, and we begin to understand more deeply the direction God wants us to go and what to avoid. And God moves us in, in that direction where we can more effectively make a difference in, in this world. Now, this is what's interesting. There are some people who have that dramatic experience with the Lord and their lives turn around 180 degrees, but most of us, most of us take a little while longer most of us, it's a learning process. Uh, we first learn about Jesus in Sunday school. Jesus seems to be around us all the time, although we lose focus as we go through life and, and something happens and down we go and all once we refocus on the Lord. But as time goes by, as we get through this life, we learn more and more and we get to the point in life where we realize, wait a minute, I need to... I need to be more dedicated spiritually. I, I've always had Jesus there in my back pocket, but, but I'm beginning to understand that God wants me to be committed. Making, making the Lord.